wanna be on top Tyra, I truly admire your courage. It must be so difficult to host a show like this and still find a way to make it about you. <laughs> Tyra Banks. The conversation never seems to end. Some people worship her as if she was a goddess, and others, well, it depends on your perspective on countless controversial topics, or even the ones that shouldn't require a genius to see what is actually going on. Tyra has been in plenty of situations that led me to make this video, so make sure to watch until the end to hear all of it. Hey friends, it's Kai and as you can see I've decided to make a deep dive video on Tyra Banks because I have too much to say since literally 2020 and it's piling up. I want to make it crystal clear that an enormous amount of things I'm about to say in this video are just my opinions and alleged so don't sue me, thank you. Tara Banks is an American fashion model and a television personality. Despite her massive successes in the entertainment industry, most people probably know about her existence to True, America's Next Top Model, where she was the host. If you aren't familiar with America's Next Top Model, it's supposed to be a modeling competition, but it's also a reality show from early 2000s, which tells us that the base of it is to create toxic drama. And this goes way before our dear cancel culture. Culture. So ethics and general sensitivity were basically non-existent in the old entertainment industry. But America's Next Top Mall is a whole another level of being problematic. Tyra Banks as well as other people from this show such as producers, judges, Janice. One of the things I never deserve it. I want to explain myself at that point because it's not fair. The thing is though, I there's no thing. Zip it, bitch. Zip it. You're dead in my book. <laughs> you see Jane's face from that moment. Like, I know. I know. Janice <laughs> and Kelly Catrone. Oh my god, I hate Kelly Catrone. She's such a bitch. They try to make it seem like it's about opening the doors for models, for modeling opportunities for young girls and later on guys to educate them about the modeling industry, to empower them. Especially because Tara was formerly rejected in the industry because she's black, which is totally messed up. So this creates the narrative that Tara is here truly to help people, to guide them, to empower them, inspire them. But in reality, she built her TV career basically by manipulatively bringing down people, mostly women, that were young, impressionable. America's Next Top Model show is assembled from an actual exploitation of people's darkest traumas, such as dark family past, addictions, insecurities. What's your, what's your word? Eating disorders, even as a and deaths. I checked my messages and found out that one of the girls I was very good friends with when I was a little bit younger um, had passed away. To portray one of these deadly sins at the bottom of this eight foot grave. No. Just to create drama for a show. And we really have to focus on the fact that participants are in their late teens and early 20s, which is such a vulnerable time. And most of those contestants didn't know much about life and going on a reality TV and being literally on screen for the whole world to see, like, y'all, this was 2000s. 
there were no social media. Those poor people. As far as I know, they weren't even paid for it as people in reality shows usually are, almost always are, except in ANDM. So this and all the other things really put America's Next Top Model into a whole another category of toxicity and damage. Not to mention the ridiculous modeling challenges that were 100% made just to make fun of models. Like Gumby on a conveyor belt, it was awful. She recovered very well. And I just thought the whole time what Miss J said, you know, no matter how it goes, keep your model composure. So that's what I was focusing on. And sometimes, a lot of times, actually put them in a physical danger. Very skinny, which means it's it, she was cold. She got to the point where she couldn't even think straight, and she started crying. Your breath is literally being, <gasps> you know, I just like I concentrate, breathe, breathe, breathe. You know, I, I had to do what I had to do. And remember, cold is dead. But not here. Okay, not here, not in face. Models were even pushed to work sick. I mean, that's how it is a lot of times in the real modeling, but they were also pushed to have intimate contacts on set with no agreement before that. And they were constantly getting gaslighted for standing up for themselves. Even being called disrespectful for simply saying how they feel. I'm a dancer and Oh no, no. You see where his hand where he's touching no. This is no models have feelings. They get uncomfortable sometimes. It's totally normal. They're human beings too. She said She said it two different times so she says twice give me space to the guys and the photographer's like oh get close to her are, are, is he not listening i don't understand Th this is this is the first problem the photographer should be the one to step in and say hey i hear martini moaning <laughs> It is about feeling comfortable. And that's what makes me so sad that she's that's the first thing that she said. Because the model's comfort is number one. It's, especially for me, like my the models I work with. The thing is that this male model, um, Bertini, he was flirting with me, he was grinding on me, I felt like he really crossed the line. There has to be a way that you can handle it, you know, you have to be able to be in control. Like, why tell the model she has to find a way to handle it? You guys need to provide a comfortable and safe environment to these models. That's your responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Why did you choose a cowboy hat? It's more on the simple side compared to the other hat, so that I can be, go crazy with accessories and express myself without being cliche. Yeah, yeah, I think you look beautiful. I think everyone probably pegged you if you're going for the typical African hat. Yeah, yeah, you're. I feel half African, half cowgirl. Looks like you're about to ride a giraffe. I think I'm not feeling it. You have this intensity to prove your sort of Africanness, and I think that sometimes it's overbearing. It's just too much. It's sort of a layer on top of a layer. In response to trying to prove myself as an African, that's just where I come from. It's very natural to me, and I did not choose that hat for the very specific reason that it's very cliche. The fabric that it's made from is very artificial, very cheap, they can't take. Oh, yeah. I didn't have the time, I know I'm running on. There's a different way of explaining yourself and being defensive. And you're being very defensive, and it's not attractive. Just because we had to talk about, you know, Afrocentricity before, and it's kind of misunderstood. I'm all about, like, expressing yourself in your culture, but it's still done in a fashion way. You want your outfit to be, look at me, and this outfit is, look over there, here's your best shot. See, that's a star. Yeah, yeah. They want to look at that. Like just that. That's the best that's picture of all. Selling jewelry. Do you see how inspired the panel is by looking at that? Absolutely. It's because it's aspirational and it's very difficult to look like that. Not every girl on the street can look like that. But every girl on the street can look like this. Mm -hmm. There you go. Model, model, model. Yeah, yeah. This girl is an ad campaign winner. And in this photo, it's kind of like a chocolate Barbarella with the hair. Yaya takes a beautiful picture effortlessly. She's bringing something from inside. But the other thing that Yaya brings from inside that is so ugly is that superiority, condescending attitude. Oops. 
Oh, and if they were quiet, they were portrayed as weak or, you know, it was like, why didn't you stand up for yourself? You should have told us. Yeah, but if the model told the judges and people what's wrong, they would call her disrespectful. So it's the amount of controversy and oh, and <laughs> if you were quiet and didn't show any emotion, this is what happened. But if I admire your emotion right now, it shows me that this was something that's very important to you. Tiffany, I'm extremely disappointed in you. This is a joke to you. You've been through anger management. You've been through your grandmother getting her lights turned off to buy you a swimsuit for this competition. And you go over there and you joke and you laugh. This is serious to this girls. And this should be serious to you. Looks can be deceiving. I'm hurt. I am. But I can't change it, Tyra. I, I've been... I you can. No, you can't change what? I'm sick of crying about stuff that I cannot change. I'm sick of being disappointed. I'm sick of all of it. I'm not... You're not sick you. of being disappointed. Yeah, Tiffany. Obviously, I am. No, you're not. If you were sick of being disappointed, you would stand up and you would take control of your destiny. Do you know that you have a possibility to win? Do you know that all of America is rooting for you? Do you know that? And then you come in here and you treat this like a joke? You come in here and look at that and say, I can't read that. You read 10 times better than half of those girls over there. You did. You did. And you come in here with a defeatist attitude. I don't have a bad attitude. Maybe I am angry inside. I've been through stuff, so I'm angry. Yes, but it's not, this is not, be quiet, quiet, but anybody, be quiet. quiet. That's what it's I'm wrong to be, quiet, but you're not. Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. All you ladies pop your pussy like I was rooting for you, we were all rooting for you, how dare you! Learn something from this! This scene is kind of iconic though. And the blame for everything that went wrong was put onto models that actually did their absolute best, as if photographers, stylists, creative directors weren't like 99% of the time guilty for the final photo. UV. It just looks horrendous. She needs to be tuna tartare. You mean you could have served it better with a pound of sequins on your face? Darling, I have. This photo is one of the worst photos in the history of America's next time model. Hello, Louise. Hello. Okay, here is your best shot that you chose. Huh. For me, you look strong, you look tough, you look very mean. Mean? Mean. <laughs> Win. I think you need to put some gratitude in your attitude, girl. Oh, I didn't like this woman. Kelly Catrone. She was always so rude, disrespectful, like, man, you need to take a vacation because I don't know why you're so angry all the time. My experience with you on the set was you were very condescending and rude to me, which no, I don't no, really no, care no, about. No, 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 no. You were rude to me. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to trust what she says because I know for a fact Kelly was probably rude. Look at her. Don't sound it. <laughs> she don't even know what to say. Okay, I'm done talking to you. Fine. You just have a problem with authority. I don't do well with rude people. You are a model. This is a publicist. Do you understand? That. There is a rank. I'm giving you a very tough lesson in how to get your career to the next level. And why are you shaking your head? <laughs> it's not. No, get away! No, no, no. no, no. It's okay. no Oh, and did you know that Tyra also had her own multi-level marketing company called Tyra Beauty? Also to inspire women and help them to create financial freedom through selling her products, which is of course not a scam. It doesn't put people in debt, vulnerable people. Meanwhile, the top 1% is the only one who's making the money, like people in top 1%, which is of course not Tyra herself. <sighs> More of this alleged talk is gonna be towards the end of this video. Before I get to the real offensive tea, I'll say a little something about Tyra's background, but if you want the actual tea in quotations, skip to this timestamp. Tyra was born in 1973 in California. Okay, wow, she's almost 50 years old. I always see her old stuff and feel like she's in her 30s. Anyways, she was raised in a suburb of Los Angeles where she attended a local all-girls Catholic school. Her mom worked as a photographer and helped Tyra to assemble a modeling portfolio when Tyra started modeling at age 15. At age 17, she began seeking professional representation from local modeling agencies where she was rejected multiple times because of her ethnic look. Long story short, agencies were racist towards my melanin queens. But Banks somehow managed to become a part of elite model management in 1990, which is one of the world's top modeling agencies. I could go on and on about her achievements after that, but let's just 
just say that everything went uphill for Tyra. To the point people started saying she's the new Naomi Campbell. In the early 90s she was featured in Michael Jackson's Black or White music video, appeared on several episodes of the TV comedy series The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and many other entertainment related things. She was truly making her way to the top of the industry. In the mid 90s Banks began to lose runway assignments because of slight weight gain and as we know that runway models are supposed to be as thin as possible. Tara didn't succumb to pressure to lose weight because she's an advocate for body acceptance or body positivity, whatever you want to call it, for woman empowerment, which becomes very questionable and ironic when it comes to America's Next Top Model. But we'll get into those details later. So Tara then focused on lingerie and swimwear modeling. In 1997, she became one of the original Victoria's Secret Angels. She also launched her own film and television production company, Bankable Productions, and co-founded the Tara Banks T-Z-O-N-E, is it a T-Zone? That would be weird. T-Z-O-N-E Foundation, dedicated to the advancement of opportunities for low-income and disadvantaged girls through the operation of various programs and services, including self-esteem workshops. Which sounds awesome, but she also created a multi-level marketing company in which she recruited women that probably ended up in debt. <laughs> Like, come on Tyra, what do you want to be, a villain or a superhero? Just pick a side already. Or at least we arrived to this hotel and they're basically just like, give us your bags. And so I was like, what the frick? And yeah, they take your bags and they go through everything. They see all of your personal belongings and they remove anything that has logos. So like this... I guess that's a logo, wouldn't be allowed, this would not be allowed, like anything that said Nike, Adidas, and additionally, they took away any magazines, any books, anything that had like words on it because I guess they're recognizable and you can't like put brands or things like that on television. And when they were taking all of our, you know, branded items and things like that, that was the time when they also asked us for our cell phones and basically they took our phones, put it in a Ziploc bag, and we didn't get to see it for the next seven weeks. So yeah, if you didn't know that, on almost all reality TV shows, I think there are no books, no smartphones, no magazines, no DVD players, no TV, blah blah blah. They take away everything. Which is why I think there is a lot of drama on these television shows because there is nothing else to freaking do. I'm very proud to say that I was well behaved on my season, but I get how people could get in arguments because you have no private things to do, no hobbies of your own really. It's hard to get time for yourself. But anyways, I'm moving on to the second thing on my list and that is about the hotel before we arrived at the show. So at that hotel where they took our suitcases and took anything that's branded or any technology, all that sort of Sort of stuff. We were basically put in a hotel room all by ourselves. I should call it a cell because it was literally like being in jail. You had the tiniest hotel room you could ever imagine. It was literally just a bed, a TV, and a bathroom. Like no room to do anything. And you're in there by yourself without a phone, without like Netflix or Hulu. You just had cable television on that TV. You didn't have any books. I didn't have a journal at that time. So there was just like literally nothing to do. I went nuts. Like literally, I remember this to this day. I went so mad after the first couple days. I started looking in the mirror and talking to myself and not like the encouraging things that you say to yourself in the mirror when you're like getting ready or whatever, but like literally having conversations with myself. You had zero human interaction for your meals. They literally set it down on the ground, knocked on your door and then they left. So when you open your door, you grabbed your meal and went back into your little cell hotel room and ate your meal by yourself. The only times you got to leave the room were if it was your time for one of the appointments. So we had to meet with like like a psychologist, I think they're called, to take these personality tests and we had to do blood work and we had to do all these various different things to prep for filming. And I would look forward to those times so much because it was the only time we got to interact with another human being. And you guys, like we were in those hotel rooms for a whole week all by ourselves. I know that sounds not that bad because you know, we've all been in lockdown during this Corona stuff, but by yourself with nothing to do, no binge series watchings, no reading, no nothing. It was torturous. And I remember there was one day where they never called me for an appointment. And so I literally didn't get to see anybody and I just really had a breakdown, it was bad. So the miking process, you literally have to be miked at all times if you are awake. So you're laying in bed, sleeping and whatever. And like the moment that you open your eyes, you have to call down for someone from production to come and put your microphone on you. You're not allowed to do it by yourself. You have to get somebody to do it for you, which makes sense. It's expensive equipment. But yeah, like if you're awake, you have a mic on. And that goes for literally like waking up to use the bathroom. I mean, sometimes you could get away with it, but basically yeah, if you were awake, you had to 
have a microphone on. Okay, so for my fourth reality TV show secret, I have that there are no doors in the house. So I think this is probably the same on a lot of reality TV shows, but like our bathrooms don't have doors. Our bedrooms didn't have doors. The bathroom at least had a curtain that you could pull across, but can you imagine? Like when you have to use the restroom and stuff, people can just walk right in. You have absolutely zero privacy on these TV shows. When I first got there, I was like, is this for real? It's literally just something that you have to get used to. I guess we all had to do it and you just kind of learn to respect each other's privacy. But this leads me into my next secret, number five. There was one room in the house that had a door and that was the confessional. So I told you about the confessional, so that's one type of interview, I guess. And then you have a more formal interview with one of the producers where they're asking you questions. So I really can't remember. I think we did interviews like every other day or something. I, I really can't remember. Maybe it was every three days, I have no idea. But anyways, you have a time slot for your interview and the first person would start at like 5 a.m. So you had to set your alarm and be camera ready for those interviews and yeah in these interviews they just ask you questions as you would imagine luckily I mean they, the producers were really really nice to me but some of the other girls told me that they'd ask like really probing questions about the other girls and kind of get them to talk some ish if you know what I'm saying but they were really nice to me for the most part and yeah so that's the interview process so the reason I put this on my list is because for these interviews they ask you to wear the exact same thing for every single one of your interviews for consistency but really they want you to wear the same thing so that they can piece one thing that you said a week ago with the thing you said this week so they can literally formulate a sentence from two completely different videos that were shot a week apart. It's pretty bad. So that's one of the things about reality TV that is kind of bad. And even though I don't think they typically do it to hurt you or like put the wrong words in your mouth, but it is concerning to me that they can just create a sentence out of things that you did not intend to go together. The word ice is we freaking hated that word because ice basically means that you're not allowed to talk. You just have to be silent and the producers get so mad at you if you talk while you're on ice. The reason that there's ice is because they want to capture everything on camera. Like if you have your mouth open, they want it to be on camera because they don't want like something to happen that they didn't get on camera and then later we're talking about it on camera. So I get where they're coming from. Sometimes you would have to be sitting there in a limousine crammed together, like everyone touching bodies and you'd have to just sit on ice for like three hours. So again, you don't have your phone, you don't have a book, you don't have anything and you just have to sit there and not talk to anybody and freaking stare into space. I mean, it was torturous at times. But I will say that the circumstances are really extreme and we're all in very close quarters, so there's a lot of reasons that fights would happen and those reasons, I guess, are because of the rules the producers put on us, but they didn't ever once tell us what to do. Except, and this leads me into my last secret, and that is that they did ask us sometimes to talk about the day. So if we were ever being like really boring or talking about, you know, something uninteresting, they would pop in and be like, okay guys, you know, you can get back to this, but can you just talk about the day for 10 minutes? And we'd be like, fine. Okay, so Binta, what did you think about what Tyra said today? Wasn't that crazy? You just have to talk about what happened for like 10 minutes and then they let you get back to your regular conversations. After the 20 minutes was up or whatever, we're like, okay, we finished and then we got phone time for the evening. So kind of funny. Again, the producers don't tell us what to say, but they do encourage us to talk about things, if you know what I mean. So India is the winner of 23rd cycle that was in 2017 and the rules probably changed since 2003. In the clips I showed she was mostly talking about America's Next Top Model as a reality show and describing how it was, like she wasn't criticizing the show or throwing shade. But I feel like that she noticed what was toxic about it but didn't want to say anything since she was the winner. Why am I saying this in quotations? Like she was the winner. <laughs> yeah, that's my opinion. I think that she wanted to seem grateful. America's Next Top Model has elements such as no privacy, filming of most things, people having to be completely quiet when cameras aren't rolling. Those things are honestly just traits of a reality TV which are pretty icky. But as a society we just accepted the fact that that's how reality TV shows are and I guess we just want the show to go on. I don't know, like it's icky. But if you watch Jessica Kobeisi's reaction videos on America's Next Top Model photo shoots, photo shoots, photo shoots and episodes, you probably noticed along with her that a lot of situations seem very, very planned or like provoked from the side of the producers that go for very insensitive ways to deal with models and their traumas. About the hotel, I don't care if it's a reality TV. The way 
how models were allegedly treated, aka locked in with absolutely no distractions. Comment down below, do you think this is just a reality TV show trait or were models tortured on purpose? So it affects them in a negative way and therefore there would be more chances for drama later on the show caused by this stress. Like, I don't know, but there was some person that commented that okay so here's the comment you can pause if you want to read it all but basically they picked girls for the show that barely passed the mental health check i'm sorry but that's so f up to do that on purpose oh and the most mind-blowing information that i've heard that i'm not really claiming it's real is that when a model is eliminated they don't actually go home but they go into the hotel which would be really bizarre if the circumstances were the same as in the beginning when they arrived imagine being eliminated first and then being locked in the hotel room all by yourself for what like two months with nothing to do like i really truly hope that this is just a conspiracy plot twist it's true what do you guys think happens when we're eliminated we go home right like, i, I want to hear what you guys think what do you guys think happens when we get eliminated it's like oh my god bye tyra to get my picture bye girls love you guys i wish i could have made it further but i didn't then what happens all you guys who said hotel are completely correct um they actually call it an annex location it's completely quiet um, and even when you get eliminated, you don't get your phone back. You're still under the same rules and pretenses that you would be if you were competing in the house. And they do make you do more interviews, yes. You are correct. Um, but they keep you there throughout the whole thing. So the saddest part, for instance, Maggie Keating. I love Maggie. They eliminated her on day three. This girl sat in a hotel for two months. The entire two months. No, you don't get your stuff back. They don't give you your phone back. You can't use your hotel phone. You can, but you'll get in trouble. Okay, I'm sorry if my position changed, but I'm sitting on the floor and it's really uncomfortable. If you don't know who Natalia Taylor is, she's basically a model and a social media star. Like, she has over 2 million subscribers, so she's pretty big in the YouTube. By the way, she followed me on previous Instagram and reposted plenty of my posts and some of drawings. And then she even mentioned my comment in one of her videos. I feel so important, like, I feel so connected to her, even though she probably doesn't even know who I am. Like doesn't even remember but anyways I see are you waking up I see oh she's going back to sleep okay yeah so Natalia made a video exposing America's next top model let's take a look a few clips and as soon as I started gaining a little bit of traction on social media, I had an individual whose name I will not state reached out to me on my Instagram via DM, private message. First off, I thought it was really weird that they decided to message me on Instagram. It was kind of informal, I mean, of all places. And of course, I thought it was a scam at first. You have to be super careful when it comes to things like this. This person ended up being real. They introduced themselves to me as the head of casting for America's Next Top Model. The casting director basically introduced himself to me and told me that he really liked my look and that he had actually finished casting America's Next Top Model for um, that season. Season. He basically informed me that when they were casting for the season I was going to be involved in, they wanted to bring on like a surprise um, model. Like they were going to start filming and then after the season like had already started, they wanted to bring in like an extra girl sort of as like a twist or like a shock to all of, you know, the models that there was another candidate that they were competing with. So he informed me that I would be the surprise um, addition to the cast, you know, a little bit into the season. And keep in mind, in, in my mind during this time, like I love America's Next Top Model. I was so excited that he reached out to me. And of course, like I had to keep super quiet on the business. I was not allowed to tell anyone about it, you know, other than my parents. So the way the casting process went was he wanted to go on a Skype call with me. So we ended up having like a long Skype call. It was so long. I think it was at least like an hour and a half long. So the Skype call was with the casting director and basically he would ask me some questions and what they would do is they would use the Skype call and like push it forward to I think like like the production or I don't I don't know the tier exactly on how that goes, but they have to like push it on to get it approved that this person can be casted. But they have to do like a Skype call first to make sure that the production company likes that person and whatever. It's kind of like an interview for a job to be honest so on this skype call he was basically giving me like questions to answer and i was so confident like i knew that i was going to do such a great job i knew that i was really good at interviews so i didn't think that i was going to have any issues but on the skype call things started to get like a little weird like he would ask me certain questions and then 
tell me how to answer them. So it wasn't like I was giving any of my own opinion or my own personality. He would say, you know, okay, so like, what's your favorite thing to do in your free time? And I would answer honestly and say like, oh, you know, I love hanging out with my friends. I love, you know, making videos on social media. And he would stop me while I was talking and be like, no, like I want you to say this. And I couldn't really tell if like he was being nice or being rude. I feel like, you know, he could have been trying to be nice because he knew like what the people wanted to hear in order for me to get on the show. But it was really weird how, you know, not only did he tell me what to say, but he told me how to say it. So I would answer the questions how he wanted me to answer them. But then like he would stop me again and say, no, like that's that's a great answer. Like, you know, obviously he gave me the answer. He's like, that's a good answer, but I need you to say it a little bit more bitchy. I'm not a bitch at all. So I was, you know, a little bit, you know, taken back the fact that he asked me to say things kind of bitchy. Um, I figured in my head at that time, I thought, you know, maybe it's just because like I need to have like a strong personality when I come through to stand out. Maybe I need to like grab their attention and be confident. I think that was my thought process at the time. And so he's throwing me these questions, telling me how to answer them, telling me, no, you need to be even more bitchy. And at this point, like I realized like this is getting kind of weird. I don't really understand what's going on. Like he's not even letting me be my own person. And then he asks me this question. Okay. This is going to blow your mind. So what would you do if someone tried to sabotage your modeling career? And I didn't really know how to answer that. So I spoke honestly even though I knew he was going to give me an answer I told him straight up you know if they tried to sabotage my modeling career honestly that's just you know on them that just means that they have something that they need to work on personally in my opinion no one can sabotage my modeling career you know as long as I make good decisions and do everything that I can and if it's not meant to be it's not meant to be and he was not happy with that answer and he looked at me through the Skype call and was like no what would you do if someone tried to sabotage your modeling career almost like he was talking to a child like he was expecting me to know what to say and not speak honestly for myself and then he proceeds to ask me like would you punch someone would you hurt someone would you throw things like trying to make me give him an aggressive answer and at that point i was like okay um no i wouldn't do that and he kind of gave up on trying to like make me act the way he wanted to act so at that point i realized that he was trying to make me sound like an aggressive person so i straight up asked him am i going to be the bitch on the show I think things are pretty clear and I don't have much commentary on this. She also spoke about other crazy, like actually crazy things that they made her do. You can check her video out, um, link to her video down below after you watch my video, of course, and like and subscribe if you want to. I just remembered on Christina Randall when she's like, and if you are a returning subscriber, I think that's so funny for some reason. But that's not to me, I'm a manly man, I'm a... Uh. And she kept telling me, we still think that you have the phone, no matter what I said. So she lets me go back into the house with the rest of the girls, and they all ask me, why did she bring you up there? And they would always do things like that, where production would pull me and separate just me from the rest of the girls. And it honestly made the rest of the cast hate me. A lot of the comments that you guys see the girls make in their in their interviews, a lot of the time it's because the producers made it seem like I was separated from the rest of them. They would separate me from them. But in reality, when you, if you ask all the girls and you talk to them to this day, a lot of them will tell you my nickname in the house was Mother Teresa. I gave away extra underwear <laughs> to contestants that came into the house without any. I did everything that I could, and it wasn't a forceful thing. That's just who I am as a person. I didn't grow up with much. And when I don't see people, and when I see people who don't have much going into a competition, and they need to compete, and they need to be the best them. I want I to deprive somebody of having something if I have extra. Every single one of the girls will tell you that. Even the ones that might seem like I have beef on TV with. It's not the way that it seemed on TV. And so for me, it just, it affected me going back into the house and trying to live a normal life with those girls too. Like, because they always felt like production had some sort of separate plan for me. Like, I even felt that they did because they would do that to me all the time and I didn't understand it. And I'm still facing challenges now, getting, getting jobs or not being physically harassed in the airport when I'm going through security because the female TSA agent recognizes me from Top Model and fucking hates me. Really think about that. This is not okay. And the saddest part about this, you guys, I direct messaged Tyra while this was happening. And I can show you guys, I'll be happy to post this screenshot on my story, I'm happy to. I direct messaged Tyra Banks and express to her that I know that this isn't all in her hands. I know that she didn't do it, but the producers did. And unfortunately, her name is on it. No one knows the producers. It's not the Ken Mock's next top model. It's not Jamie's next top model. It's Tyra Banks and America's next top model. And that's why people put so much on her because she's the face, she's the representative, she's the creator, she's the founder of this entire venture. So that's why it does fall on her. I sent her a message and explained to her what goes on behind the scenes in production, just in case she didn't know. I'm sure she does. I'm 100% sure she does. 24 cycles of America's Next Time Model in like 15 years. She knows. Plenty of girls have told her. She read my message, you guys. And left it on scene. She never responded to me. Who does that? This is your name. There's lawsuits being brought up because of things like this but you don't want any responsibility in it. You claim and you speak on all this female empowerment and building people up and accepting their differences, when in reality, you do the opposite. You, you, you physically push the opposite. You might say something else, but your actions 
prove otherwise. That model aired the same year that I was diagnosed with alopecia and lost all my hair. I remember I would go home from school just to watch American Next Top Model, just to watch Tyra preach about how being different is beautiful and how having something so imperfect makes you beautiful. And I grew up idolizing this woman. Like things, and she's like, so you've done some like better, better modeling, right? And I was just like, huh? And she was like, yeah, like, you know, some like sexy, sexy stuff. And Tyra said, um, yeah, you went from like little girl modeling to like blah, blah, boom or something like that. And I was like, are you guys referring to Playboy? And they were like, yeah. I was like, yeah, of course. You guys found out that I did Playboy episode 10 and they kind of tried to use it as, you guys didn't find that out until episode 10. So <laughs> it kind of made you guys view it as something that I kept as a secret and that production found out later and used against me. That's not the case. Um, they knew about Playboy when I was doing Skype interviews from my house before I was guaranteed a cast member. Um, I never kept that a secret. Um, I know I never kept it a secret because even for Playboy, I used my real first and my real last name. I think I got defensive right away because I feel like her demeanor kind of changed sitting on the panel. Like she kind of crossed her arms and was just like looking at me like all weird, right? And I remember telling her, yeah, I have to Playboy. And I said, for me, in, in my career, I wanted to be a model so bad. I wanted to be a high fashion model so bad. And none of it happened for me because I'm short or because of how I look or because of my body type or whatever the case may be. So it made sense as a small girl with a little bit of curves to be put in lingerie. I figured out at an early age with my career in the beginning of everything that sex sells, you know? And I was at a point at Tyra, I said, you said it on the show plenty of times that sex sells. And I found out that that was what was going to work for my career, you know? And, and Tyra said, I swear to God, you guys, and this doesn't mean I'm having sex. That doesn't mean I'm escorting. That doesn't mean I'm tricking. That doesn't mean I have a pimp. That doesn't mean that my vagina is being penetrated on the internet. There's a difference. A lot of people think that pornography and nude modeling are the same thing. Um, porn is very different than just a girl standing there naked, no matter what you can see. It just, that's not the same. It's not the same thing. It was my virginity until I was 16, almost 17 years old to my high school sweetheart of five years. I was not that girl, you know? So as much as they tried to make it seem like that to me, it was, it, I wasn't the sexy girl. So when I got that, that label all the time, it really frustrated me because I don't ever, I didn't ever feel sexy. When I said sex sells and you've said that on the show and I, I just found out that that worked for my career. She crossed her fucking arms, Tyra Banks crossed her arms and looked at me and said, I don't like that. You sound like a fucking prostitute. And turns and looks this way and would not make eye contact with me the entire time. And I started bawling because I just had the woman that I've idolized my entire life tell me that I sound like a fucking prostitute. And little do you guys know, I grew up in foster care. It seemed on TV, they made it sound on TV like I lost my mom, like she died. My mom didn't die, but I did lose my mom's strength and lose my mom to, to drug abuse and prostitution when I was a kid. I was put in foster care. I grew up in foster care. I would never repeat the same things that my mom did that put me in the positions and the shit that I dealt with as a kid. So for me, it was more, it was so offensive to me that I just started crying. And I had four judges at that point, four different people yelling different slandering things back to me, basically telling me that I sounded slutty or I sounded whorish or that I was wrong. The only person that didn't bash me was Ashley Graham. And I'm telling you, when I started bawling, trying to defend myself, Tyra uncrossed her arms and goes, now tell me about alopecia. And that's where you guys see my interviews start. They skip all the Playboy stuff. They skip all the shit that makes me me. I didn't know about this until the show airs. I watch it when you guys watch it. I love blocking people, I really do. I have thousands and thousands of people on a list that are blocked. Um, and most of it came from America's Sex Not Model just because I couldn't physically like read my comments anymore. Like every time I got on the internet or got on my own page or like, it was constant. Like I posted something that didn't even have anything to do with America's Sex Model. Like just the campaign or work that I got. I'm a really small person. The wardrobe was always way too big for me. They always had to pin it. They always had to do something. The top was huge on me. This strap that was on me on this side, it was, the shirt was stiff. It was a vintage leather shirt. So the strap was just stiff. It wasn't a stretchy strap like this. It just kept falling off, falling off, you know, and I'm in the middle of my shoot trying to pick it back up and then also laugh and then fucking pick it back up and move my pose, like pick it back up and go, you know, like I'm trying to like use it in my, in my motions, right? Well, they happened to choose one of the shots where I happened to be down. At the time I was flat chested. I was 89 pounds going into the house, going into America's until I was 89 pounds. Um, I had no boobs. I didn't really have boobs growing up. I literally just got boobs like last summer. Um, but I didn't have any, this body, you know, and I definitely didn't approach that shoot in, in a sexy way. And I didn't try to, um, specifically because I saw the inspiration pictures and she was literally balled up doing this. And that's what I really sat on the floor. And, you know, I did, but I did, and it apparently comes across too sexy. Um, and I, they make me stay in my wardrobe though. Um, and then it's Christiana's turn to shoot. So Christiana, first to me, Christiana's doing amazing in her shoot, but they made her switch an outfit and made her completely switch like her other clothes and her look and put her on a different background. When they when they put her on a different background, they come once again and they come and grab me and they walk me over to her set and they don't just stand right here. Stand right here and watch. Why? Like why? I got in trouble that day from production for not being interactive with the girls because I was so busy talking to stylists, talking to makeup artists, talking to the, the graphic guy, talking to the guy who's running video, talking to the new photographer. I tried my hardest to network my ass off and not feed into any of the drama even when the opportunities presented themselves. I avoided it. They literally yelled at me that day and told me that they will send me home if I do not interact with the girls more and that I need to go sit by the girls and talk instead of being standing over here. At that time I was talking to the wardrobe stylist. Um, and that's where I walked over and I probably was kind of like upset because of what they just said to me, but I wasn't upset at Christiana and I wasn't trying to interrogate her or like instigate her shoot or anything like that um 
not that kind of person and honestly when you really think about it why would i do it at a shoot and not do it at the house if i was really going to be a catty shady bitch i would do something in the house that will throw you off your game so that you're already off by the time you get to the shoot let's be real I really felt the need to include all of those clips into my video because what Gina said has a huge role in all of it. And a disclaimer, of course, I cut those clips and edited it. This isn't the full version, so just a disclaimer. Links for the full video, it's down below. We still have a lot to unpack, so I don't even know what to comment on Gina's confession. Besides that, what America's Next Top Mall did was a raw exploitation of trauma. Those toxic reality TV shows show traits were intentionally toxic, intentionally damaging, harmful. It wasn't 100% Tyra's fault, that is also Ken Mock, the producer of America's Next Top Model, but Tyra still has a big percentage of responsibility. She talks, or more accurately, she talks herself out in an interview or on an interview, I don't know, sorry, I'm not English speaking naturally, naturally, formerly. I'm Slovenian and I also speak Spanish, so don't attack my English please. Yeah, so she was talking herself out in this interview of America's Next Top Mall controversy. In my opinion, it's not very sincere. Even though she realizes that a lot of things were wrong. Do you remember the blackface photo shoots? If that was now when cancel culture is a thing, Tyra would pretty much be killed by Gen Z. Yeah, so let's take a look on this interview. Looking back now, is there anything you would change about the show? Um, because obviously there's a lot of talk about it now, and even though course, it's yeah. iconic and we love it, but it's, it's being brought back into the conversation. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on it looking back? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting because I started America's Next Top Model um, as a very early voice about diversity and inclusion. We were way before what is a trend now that I hope becomes the norm. Uh, right. We opened so many doors and my, my um, partner's uh, Korean American. I'm sorry. Um, his wife is Korean. He is uh, Chinese. His kids are half. Um, so he's a uh, Korean. I'm um, sorry. Chinese American. <laughs> I, I, there's a reason why I keep doing that because they have a fun name. They combine both of their names. Combine it. Okay. Yeah. Private. Stuff, but <laughs> I yeah. was like, that's their I'm own the family thing. Kids. I'm the godmama of <laughs> yeah. the kids. I'm the godmama of the kids. I'm not going to say what it is because it's private, but they combine. Tara, you aren't answering the question. Private. Stuff, but but yeah. I was like, that's their own family thing. Kids. I'm the godmama of <laughs> yeah. the kids. I'm the godmama of the kids. I'm not going to say what it is because it's private, but they combine. So that's why I get it confused sometimes. But um, no, he's Chinese American. His name is Ken Mock. And, um, and so it was our mission to, to be diverse and to push back when we were told that we couldn't be as diverse. Um, so from, from, People didn't even know what a plus size model was like 20 years ago. They're like, what? What is that? And, and even now, when we look at what a plus size model is today, our girls were skinny. And even back yeah. then, designers that my, my, my models back then would go on go season, and the designer wouldn't even have clothes that fit them. So it was just being on the beginning of something and pushing through. You can just feel how she's talking herself out of it and highlighting the good bits. Guys, this is a nine minute long interview. If it was an hour long, I would get why so much rambling, but this is not going anywhere season that the designer wouldn't even have clothes that fit them so it was just being on the beginning of something and pushing through um at that same time i was still a working model and still being told oh you're too fat tyra you're too this you're too that you can't work if you can't do that and hearing my friends have all this negativity and seeing what was in the way of them working um but i was still this like unique beauty crusader i was also this person trying to get these models work and i think at times they battled because I wanted them to get work, but even more important to me was being a beauty, beauty crusader. And so what ends up happening is that it's a clash, right? I'm saying, oh, I want all these unique beauties, but you need to change that, you need to change that because I have these agents in the background saying, yeah, you want us to sign these girls, but she needs to change this and she needs to change that and that's how she's gonna work. And um, I wrote a book with my mom um, and in the book, I talk about that. I talk about some of the things on Top Model that in hindsight, and this is way before any of this stuff uh, trended recently, this is a couple years ago, I was like, in hindsight, I should have still been that beauty crusader that is my heart and soul and why I started the show. Tyra, Tyra, 
Honey. I understand that you were negatively affected by the industry, pressured. But don't blame everyone else for the mistakes you did or the mistakes you actively participated in. I swear, 2000s were such an insensitive, toxic era, like it was so chaotic. Just acknowledge what you have done and apologize. Like, you were in extreme... Like, you were in an extremely high position to make an impact, a positive one. And yet, you kinda are preaching positivity, but you don't practice what you preach, Tyra, at all. You can watch this 9 minute long interview link down below, but you won't hear any accountability taken. And I'm so happy that comments under that interview called Tyra out. Guys, this video is so overwhelming to make, like so overwhelming. If you came this far, you might as well support me with a simple like and subscribe if you aren't already, if you want to. I don't know why the interviewers titled this video Tyra apologizes. Apologize, apologizes. This was such a clickbait. I'm not throwing shade on these content creators, but if I made that interview, I wouldn't let Tyra get away with everything and I wouldn't like be smiling as she rambles. I'm sorry, the interview was terrible. Yes, I'm being shady and worry about it. The interview was terrible, the interviewers didn't do a good job, like, I'm sorry. It, it just wasn't good, but I guess they also didn't feel like making too much questions because they were talking to the Tyra Banks, so I can give them the benefit of a doubt. So let's take a look a bit of the interview my girl Jessica did with Lisa D'Amato and I will roll one another clip if I find it. So, and all the links will be down below. Another one I thought was funny is people were like, well, if you told them anything traumatic about your life, then that's why they chose to pick you or to use your trauma against you. And I'm like, uh, actually, they know your character from your psychological evaluations regardless. Because a lot of the questions will be like, if there's somebody that's getting hurt in front of you, are you A, going to walk away? It's none of my business. B, stand up for that person. C, um, tell somebody else, you know? And so they already know like exactly how you're going to react to stressful situations anyway. So they already know how to pin you against other girls because they like, of course I'm going to fight with Bianca, you know, from cycle. I don't even have an original cycle, but do you see what I mean? They create so these like, storylines based on your answers, like mm -hmm. the evil one or the one that's lost. They always say, Oh, you, we don't even know who you are. Exactly. I, I try to tell everybody, whoever's willing to listen to like go to ANTM, like any, any season of ANTM's like bitch bitches page and just like go give her a cyber hug because that is the girl that is potentially, I want to say like the biggest star. And I'm not saying that for me, but like I, in history, like all watching all the episodes, like the bitches are so good. Like Melrose, Cycle Six. I love Melrose. They, so they gave her a bad edit for no reason. They were so mean to her for no reason. She's a bitch. That's she why. They so know this. Also, the reason why they express to us that these psychological evaluations are so important is because they are then going to put you into the public arena of the of the United States at the time. Like I just thought it was going to play one season um, on American television. Um, they want to make sure that it, it they're releasing you in your own safe space so you can handle it, and also so it's safe during filming so you don't have a breakdown because the whole entire two months they are um, putting you under the pressure cooker. Like it's. It's psychological torture that whole two months. And even if they are being kind to you, like a lot of the girls had a really amazing experience on the show. You know, like Laura Kirkpatrick from um, the short season. I don't remember what season that was, but you know, she had a wonderful experience. So when I come out and tell mine, they get offended. Like if I'm trying to get attention and I'm like, whoa, like you're allowed to have your experience, but I'm allowed to have mine, you know? So when other girls come out about their stories, and then get mad at each other for expressing them. That makes me so sad because everyone's allowed to have their own journey with this and not stand. Because even with like fighting for social justice over the course of these last two years, like because people see me as a bitch still, like in their subconscious, they then think that I'm doing social justice for all the wrong re reasons. And I'm like, this is so painful that this is happening because still of this show. You know, it's like this echo chamber that I could like never escape. And also, if they give you a horrible edit, you know, going in, um, just like on social media now, people are like, well, why'd you do that? You could have just done, you know, there's so many other ways to get famous. Like you knew what you're getting into. And you're like, what are you talking about? You're saying that looking at society now and looking at social media now and TikTok now, 13 channels that people watched on television. There wasn't like crazy YouTube. Like I had a MySpace page, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't just like, it wasn't like this whole, I'm like, what are you talking about? If you wanted to be like big time famous, you went on television, you tried to get on TV, you know, like that's what it was or get booked in a movie or whatever. Um, so yeah, it was a different, it was a, it was a different time, but like, um, yeah, I just, I just really want, uh, everyone to be kind to each other and the process, because 
it is never not traumatizing for me going online. Like it just is what it is. And so for me coming out and speaking the truth and like telling everybody my side, now that it's like almost everyone's willing to hear it, um, or at least I'm netting some of the fandom who are willing to listen, which is, if it's so warm and fuzzy feeling. I love it. Um, it's important, you know, it's important. People can't be treated like this. Something that I signed up to do, I thought was going to air one season in the United States. There's 194 countries. It repeats in 180 countries. Syndication on repeat forever. That's the whole entire planet. And people are trying to tell me how to feel about my trauma. My, I, my trauma is a totally separate thing. And then the weaponized trauma on repeat on the entire planet forever. Nobody can tell me how to feel, not even any other ANTMer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you guys all um, have your own unique experiences. And as I've mm -hmm. seen, and as people have seen, you guys get your own edit. You mentioned the villain edit. People have been getting the villain edit, the nice girl edit, the favorite edit. I'm sure that being on the show, every single model has had their own version of like what they went through. And I think that these are all valid. They're not invalid. Um, I think that the show should be held responsible and you guys are should, but I understand why you guys don't share your stories as much you know you mentioned the ndas and i've heard that a lot of girls are like worried or scared to speak out which you know i understand that yeah it's not just a contract it's also um they know what this echo chamber feels like and so they even see if anybody says anything even just me like they're like oh crap i'm done i ain't touching that you know um i get destroyed you know and I picked it up and put it even on my YouTube channel. And I was like, look what Nigel just said. He basically said that that Tyra Banks, it's on YouTube, that Tyra Banks picks every single picture from day one. No way. She I always thought it was like some picture. editor in the back room, like pick the worst photo. Do you think that they, what, okay, what is your theory on this? Do you feel like they will purposely pick a bad photo? Because sometimes I'm like, this is a clearly Absolutely. a test shot. It's a test shot. Not a doubt in my mind. Because listen, I mean, we've both done photo shoots. We know people are taking thousands of photos and you're going to judge just one picture that is chosen maybe to fit a, a narrative or a storyline. It's kind of, in my opinion, it's, come on, it's it's not quite a fair. A billion percent, models. trillion percent, not one percent. I don't think that's not it. Like I, even Janice Dickinson said, like, she was so bummed when she found out that CoverGirl picks the winner. You know, she came out Wait, and said what? that like from the beginning. Yeah, Janice came out even in her, on an interview, she was like, yeah, she found out shortly through the game that the winner was previously chosen by CoverGirl. And then, you know, what happens after that, then everyone says that she's crazy and she comes from trauma too, but like, let's just discredit her. Like, obviously she's crazy. So she's lying about everything. The way that they edited me on Top Model, I would go to my commercial auditions and I realized like a lot of the same casting directors weren't calling me. It was all new ones because now my face was associated with this alcoholic bitch persona. And so like, now I'm not going to be doing the smiley face, clean bathroom shop for crest. I wasn't going to be doing palms commercials. And so it just, it, it, it's, it cut my modeling career into just being edgy, just being outspoken. I'm helping them pick the clothes to wear for this challenge or whatever. And then when it was time for them to shoot their challenge, everyone else was told to like leave the house and go outside for sound, right? So to like go by the pool and hang out, right? And then they're like, Lisa, you stay in here. And I was like, I wanted to go lay out. Like I thought I was off, right? So they, I was like, what? And they're like, just stay in here and like encourage the girls. Like you just help them pick their outfits out. They were wearing my clothes that I just put them in for this challenge. And they're like, they want you to be here and encourage them. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm a nice person. So I was like, sure, you know? So I was sitting there and like watching them do the whole thing. And then in editing, like when I watched the show and I knew this was happening, something weird was happening at the time. Um, so that was a big red flag, but they kept panning and making it look like I was just trying to be there to intimidate them. But they put me there on purpose, you know? And even knowing that I was literally just, I was the one that was just helping them so that they would look great in this. Um, when I was actually doing that photo shoot, the photographer was like blown away. She was like, Oh my God, you're so good. Like so many, like you're so, you know, in the moment and it's, it's, it comes across supernatural, blah, blah, blah. Then when they present, when we went into panel and they presented that horrible shot, which I know that they were punishing me on purpose. Like I knew that. And then that photographer in panel was like, da, 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 da. and she like negative things to say. And I was like, Oh, she's just going along with this narrative. When I got eliminated on cycle five, I wasn't crying or anything because I knew it was happening. Like I knew I got punished and I know like, that's why I got eliminated. We're in London. And I'm talking to the camera, I just got eliminated and they're like, they wanted more emotion out of me, right? Because I wasn't giving, I wasn't crying because I was eliminated. And the camera guy, I'll never forget it, it was this Asian kid and he looks, he's getting something from his walkie and he's looking at me and I just answered again without any emotion and I'm waiting to just go to the hotel like I'm just trying to get this over with. And he goes, knowing that you got sent home and you aren't the winner and you aren't going to be the winner, like, does it make you immediately think about your mom? And my mom is like my biggest torture in my life. So I remember looking at him and looking into the camera because I knew Ken Mock just sent him that to say to me and knowing that they would go so low in that moment, that's what made me start crying. So if you see it even on the show, like I'm talking to camera and I'm fine. And then all of a sudden I answer the next question and I'm crying. And it was because in that moment they brought up my mom again 
And that is so manipulative and painful to know that they'll do that right in that moment. And so that's, I'll say it again. If people think, you know, I get this still, you can say all you want about Tyra, but I still love her. And I'm like, great, fine. But like when people uh, constantly make it seem like I'm attacking, I'm the attacker, you know, like coming and talking about this, like I'm the, the attacker. No, I'm not the attacker. I'm a victim and I'm trying to help other people not be victims in this industry and to expose so that they they can't get you to watch the show and believe this anymore. Like they can't get you to watch that show and believe it anymore. First of all, I would like to say that I love Jessica. I love the effort she's putting to get the truth out there through social media. Check out her interviews, her America's Next Top Model reaction videos. They are gold. And I also love Lisa. I haven't watched her on ANTM, but seeing this person on this interview gives me such a good perspective on her for some reason. Like her energy just seems so genuine and so so refreshing and I have no words for what they did to her on this show and to other girls Lisa and all of the other girls are so strong for surviving this and speaking up about it I, I just love Lisa she's awesome the fact how they exploited people's traumas on this show this deserves jail okay so I'm just editing the video and I noticed that Excuse my cat, this noise is for my cat. Yeah, so I've noticed that most of the time it's not even me talking in the video but other models. So I want you to know that that was my point. In this video, I really wanted to make all in one her story and her story and her story. So that's why you see a lot of that. And just one thought, imagine those are few girls that I mentioned in this video. Imagine that there has been hundreds of men and women that have those experiences. And they are maybe still being hated by the whole world because of the bad edit. It's so bizarre. I'm really glad that people are speaking about it, but just imagine there are videos about, oh, this and this model being bitchy and people are kind of canceling that model and trying to be righteous because, oh yeah, she's a bitch. Like, this is wrong, this is wrong. So we should attack her and shut her down. But what if it's just an edit and this person maybe didn't even do those things and she's still being hated. Oh my God, my cat is making a noise. Okay, excuse her, she's the sweetest. Maybe some of the models are dead by now. It's bizarre what ANTM can mock and Tyra Banks did to them. For example, at the moment I'm watching the episode where Tyra is asking the contestants, so there are three and each one of them she asks who do you think that has the most potential to stay in this competition and who do you think that has the least? Of course every girl will say that she has the most potential and Tyra is making them to pick the one who has the least potential and it's basically so obvious that she is doing this for the drama and the thing is this is drama that can ruin model's life. It can ruin model's life. And yes, they should have thought about this before they applied to the competition, but I get that point, but it's also not right. I'm talking about the episode with Jenna. Everyone is saying, oh, she comes off and she thinks she's so much better than people. And when you actually see those clips rationally, it's like, no, she's not. She really seems like a sweet person and she kind of has a resting bitch face and it also hits home because I do come across very serious and yeah, in some situations I am serious i do have a resting bitch face for a reason because you know but then that's one thing and the other thing is that someone creates a narrative that just because you have that type of a face or a posture posture you're uh, an actual bad person and tyra did exactly that knowing that this will go on a national tv and she didn't even have to say yeah this girl is a bitch because she made other girls to say and who do you think has the least potential I feel like uh, out of everyone, Chantal is the most amateur. Tara was just so happy to hear that. She's like, thank you so much. Noted. This is going to really help the future episodes of this show. In the panels, what's with the panels? They always criticize girls. The girl would come to the judging and they would be like, why do you wear that? You should wear this. And then the other girl will wear what they ordered and she would be criticized for that. And it would be like, hair down, hair up. And they always make it so deep when they put up the pictures of the photo shoot. They're hmm, you are really strong or you're not strong enough. Like, your eyes are dead. No, they're not dead. She's just watching to the camera and you photoshopped her so much and you're you look so dead what happened what do you think they're misunderstanding I, I just hate that like just because i'm not like running around like smiling all the time that makes me mean or makes me think I'm yes people. exactly I mean, I rainbows 
Okay, just look at this. Look how they traumatized her in those clips. Because I had to be a mom. You have to raise your family. My sister's dead. So then you have some enemies that towards mama? Uh, uh. What? What does this have to do with anything? And she's obviously in pain. Hey, this is me right now. This is literally my face behind the camera. Naomi Campbell, in case you don't know, it's a British supermodel now in her 50s that reached her massive international success in the late 80s and during the whole 90s. Being as successful as Naomi in those times while being black was basically non-existent as I mentioned because of racism. That's why she's such an icon, you know, for breaking through. But she kinda got the reputation of a mean girl, which a lot of beautiful and confident people do. And as much as you try to prove otherwise with your actions, people will still treat you as you're a mean person and hate you because they're the mean ones and probably jealous. So Tyra also contributed to this narrative that Naomi is a bitch. There's plenty of deep dives on Naomi and Tyra on YouTube, so I'll just say it straightforward. There was a lot of comparison between Naomi and Tyra since they were the first black supermodels, basically. Oh, and just to throw this in, remember when Tyra went undercover as a or as a stripper and painted herself darker to degrade herself. Yeah, let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Especially if you're a person of color watching this. Just like comment down below what do you think about this. I think it's really controversial. Okay, so continuing with Naomi. Tyra, in my personal alleged opinion, felt threatened by Naomi and was jealous of her. That's why she created a bad image for Naomi. And it was just this never-ending, almost obsessive cycle of comparison. Banks even invited Naomi on Tyra's show that aired from 2005 to 2010 and in this episode Tyra was talking about how she feels and it almost felt like Tyra was this crazy fan that's kind of sad because her idol aka Naomi doesn't care about her as much as she wanted to. Naomi however responded very well in my opinion. However I've affected you, have you felt that I've affected you, I take my responsibility and I just want to say I'm very proud of you been a powerful black woman sitting here and doing what you're doing and please continue okay we I'll leave the link to the full video down below. This interview wasn't the worst thing on Tyra's show. The way how Banks once Loki acted possessed because she thought it would be funny. <laughs> Why was Tyra such an idol to people? Like, we really didn't notice how unstable she was. And the way how she sexualized men and pressured them into the situations that they were clearly uncomfortable in. I want you to pay me, Robert. It's like straightforward inappropriate. I mean, yeah, like Tara is hot, like she's attractive, but that doesn't mean that every single person wants her. If the gender roles were, oh, my English, oh, I'm struggling, okay? It's like really early in the morning and I really want to post this video, so excuse my chaotic self. Yeah, if the gender roles were reversed, people would probably freak out about this even in 2000s. And the way how Tara makes everything about herself, like when she pretended to be homeless for 12 hours, then returned to her mansion and her millions and then a model on America's Next Top Model spoke about her experience with poverty and being homeless and then Tyra or the producer created this photo shoot kind of like homeless poverty themed and at the judging Tyra was something like yeah this is so close to my heart like this topic is so close to my heart Tyra you pretended to be homeless for 12 hours like a lot of people that were actually experiencing homelessness were commenting how it feels just like icky and kind of insensitive I mean I honestly don't want to judge too much but it's just really shows how celebrities are out of touch like they want to be relatable but then they do stuff like that and it's just mm, I I don't know Tyra was put on a pedestal for being an inspiring icon and I acknowledge that Tyra achieved many many things her breakthrough into the modeling and entertainment industry especially as a person of color in those times is really cool but she took advantage of her power in the worst way possible while making it look like she's some kind of a role model this came to the point that Tyra even created her own multi-level marketing company called Tyra Beauty. Beauty. Tyra Beauty. Where beauty and entertainment 
collide. Tyra Beauty was actually presented through America's Next Top Model. Remember that music video, Beautiful or Beautiful? I mean, it was kind of a vibe, like models really did a good job. And just to throw this in, the models that were so criticized, like they were all doing such an amazing job when they were participating in those challenges. And I just don't know why they criticized them so much. Yeah, again, for the drama, but they were actually like really doing a good job. If you don't know what multi-level marketing or MLM is, I'm afraid that you're missing on my previous videos. So it's basically a business system where you sell products, but those products aren't even sold to customers that would love them and want to use them most of the time. They are sold to people that are recruited slash encouraged to join the company, the team. They usually buy those products for a ridiculous price, way above the actual worth. And then they end up in debt while being convinced that they will achieve financial freedom and they sell this dream to other people desperately trying to recruit them but the only people that are actually making money like money that you can live on or like a lot of money are in the top one percent and the other 99 percent of the people or they don't make any money or they make barely any money that doesn't really help them they just like contribute to the success of the top one percent because the uplines manipulate them literally manipulate them through the extremely cult like meetings nowadays zoom meetings that are much easier to attend and therefore many more people fall for this and it's basically full of love bombing and toxic positivity and lies and if anything goes wrong when you join this business it's completely your fault because you didn't think positive enough because you didn't manifest enough positivity that kind of stuff i'm really sorry for the noise but i just want to film this so they manipulate you to even buy motivational books and courses like spend even more money on that shit and you're basically advertising the product 24 7 for free and buy products every month actually not making any money and the most disgusting part of it in my opinion is that you're being targeted for this job while you're the most broke and vulnerable and a lot of times young or like single moms or stay-at-home moms like that kind of situations that are kind of uncomfortable financial wise for some people and because you're so vulnerable you don't know any better and join that system and if you see something sketchy or negative those uplines completely step in your head and convince you that you're in the wrong and basically try to convince you that you're crazy that you're the one who's not open-minded enough which like i would get that if someone is talking about being financially free and actually making money and you're just like so close-minded but it's different when it comes to the scam they make you believe that they're helping you while they are scamming you i was almost sucked into this almost exactly one year ago i think because i actually really wanted to be financially free but not for any materialistic reasons i'm really not a materialistic person i never was i never will be even if i have money i won't do anything with it if it makes sense and I wanted that freedom to help other people because I see that there are people that don't have much and I just wanted to help them and I was like in such a vulnerable place and uplines, Slovenian uplines from the company called Behip that is basically a ripoff of Herbalife <sighs> you know who you are you but yeah they know exactly what they're doing and make you feel bad if you have a simple job or if you want more simple life or if you aren't materialistic mind games they play with vulnerable people and basically shame them for not joining them so they would make money off of them is just disgusting and the fact that tyra banks also did this to other people while allegedly being fully aware of what she was doing has no excuse like she creates this narrative that her mother was struggling financially financially and then i don't know like just the setback story that was presented so she could suck people in this system and basically scam them it's just so frustrating i want to tell you the story of a woman a woman that stayed married to her husband longer than she should have because she didn't have the money or the independence to leave a marriage that she felt was no longer a positive in her life that woman was my mama and one of those kids was of course me and my mama is somebody that thinks outside of the box if there was like a more modern and an edgy and a fun independent business opportunity available for her back then she would have created that financial freedom and achieve those goals sooner. 
So what is Tyra Beauty? And how did my mama struggle lead me to here today? Her company failed, which is good, because there was no more victims. But also poor people who left everything to participate. Because they needed money only for the company to fail. And dumb probably ending in debt with a bunch of useless products. With Tyra's face on the cover. <gasps> okay, anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you came this far, I would really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up. Like, it really helps me as the creator with the algorithm. Like, you have no idea. Um, if you want to subscribe, if you aren't already, if you are subscribed, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yes, you. And just comment down below what you think. This video is a bit for me to make. It's so much work, like weeks and weeks and weeks. So yeah, I truly hope you liked it and check out the videos I link down below if you want to see more. I was just trying to make it all in one, I guess. And yeah, Sky loves you. God bless you. Bye-bye.